It takes 18,000 employees at Luxottica in its factories and warehouses an average of 12 days to deliver a pair of spectacles from assembly line to store. Last year, the Milan-based company produced more than 60 million pairs of glasses in 50,000 styles, half of which were new designs. This massive output requires a global network of 10 plants on four continents, coordinating a broad mix of brands, including licensed names such as Dolce and Cabana, as well as Luxottica's own Oakley sunglasses range. What started out in 1961 as a small workshop in the Italian Alps has evolved not just into the world's biggest maker of eyewear, but a graphic illustration of how manufacturing is changing. In the 21st century, the companies who are going to succeed in manufacturing are the ones who do well in blending together a mix of capabilities from around the world in technology, design and manufacturing know-how. Luxottica's factory in California stands out from the company's other main manufacturing hubs in Italy and China because of its idiosyncratic architecture and concentration on sportswear. But Luxottica chief executive Andrea Guerra says the company's ability to integrate its US operation is part of the broad way its global DNA has evolved. Well, I'm always saying that we are a home of diversities in terms of businesses, geographies, own brands, licensed brands, luxury, Rayban, Oakley, China, Italy, and uh, it took 50 years to manage this home of diversity in a very natural way. Luxottica's story is all about supervising highly complex sets of global networks, taking into account not just the transfers of hundreds of millions of parts and finished frames, but of a vast number of ideas and designs. Managing these relationships, covering hard materials and soft intellectual property is what's behind networked manufacturing, a concept becoming highly important for all kinds of companies in the new industrial revolution that is now starting. So uh, cost is not the primary factor in our business. I think it's innovation, it's new collections, new ideas, new technologies, get the flavor, ride the wave, and service our consumers and customers properly. In Luxottica's various hubs, Northern Italy continues to carry most influence. But the company's factory in Dongguan City in southern China is rapidly gaining ground, not just capitalizing on its much lower costs, but also making steady progress in new product development and novel manufacturing concepts. The company has had to make sure its Chinese, cost-driven, technology-centered approach can fit in with a different style in the Californian operation, which puts greater emphasis on new fashion concepts and working with brands, chiefly Oakley. You know, when we first uh, joined forces, I mean, y you could go uh, to a management meeting in Milan and you'd see uh, cats like myself uh, walking around in flip-flops, board shorts and a t-shirt. And, but I'd be having a conversation with a guy in khakis and a blue Oxford. So, I mean, visually, we're, our style is, is different. That uh, diversity uh, speaks volume to the strength of the, the overall organization. Luxottica seems to have managed to orchestrate the difficult and complex model of networked manufacturing about as well as anyone else in the world. Of course, it's yet to demonstrate that the other aspects to its business, based around persuading more and more people that they want different types of glasses, not just to improve their sight, but their looks also, will necessarily stand the test of time. But it's a question of work day by day and having a great spirit of reinventing yourself, your people, constantly. Well, I'm here at the end of a global journey in which I've seen the three most prominent production and design operations of the Luxottica company. And what I've seen is a kind of industrial democracy at work, where the company's been able to make best use of, of a lot of different ideas from different places. As in any democracy, of course, there's always going to be dissenting voices, even the odd show of dissent or discord. 
but it's the companies who can make the best of sometimes quite idiosyncratic localities and forge them into something good that will compete on a global basis that are going to do well as the 21st century proceeds. This is Peter Marsh, Financial Times in Orange County, California.